Hello and welcome to a Taylor's Tales podcast. This is Chris's Corner. I'm your host, Chris Taylor, and welcome back to a brand new episode. This week, of course, everyone's talking about it. Of course, I've got to commentate on it as well. It's Barbenheimer or Oppen uh, Berber. What did he say? Or <laughs> the combinations of Barbie and Oppenheimer. Uh, the two movies that have created a meme that has brought the film industry back to uh, its maybe its standard or or what it was in the early 2000s the hype the amount of people i saw in the cinema i went and saw uh, mission impossible yesterday dead reckoning part 1 And I saw so many people at the cinema. And as those who listen to this podcast know, I am a big advocate for the film industry. I am somebody who is truly appreciative of the work that is done in the film industry. And I truly appreciate going to the cinema, seeing new films in person and having that cinema feel. I do it once a month, once or twice a month. This month is going to be twice a month because of both Oppenheimer, Barbie and Mission Impossible. I wanted to see Mission Impossible because I wanted to support uh, Tom Cruise, who I believe revived the film industry. As I said earlier, Oppenheimer and Barbie have brought back this fantastic meme of getting people to see it back to back because it's released on the same day. Fantastic juxtaposition of two different films on completely different spectrums, but at the same time both high quality. The fact that they happen to be released on the same day just brought that spark of madness together to be able to revive the film industry and get people to dress up for Barbie in bright pink and for Oppenheimer to be this idea of everybody's going to get blown up by a nuclear bomb when they go watch the film and it's just BANG! We have a confirmed nuclear bomb. There goes Hiroshima again. Now, a joke, obviously, but this is the fun. This is the great thing. And when we had, back in the pandemic, we had Maverick, Top Gun, coming back. And again, pumping the film industry for people to go see this film because it was bringing people together once more, going on an adventure through film and picture and getting that excitement and that distraction from the like the normalities of life. And this is what I love about the film industry. It doesn't matter how, how hard life can get for most people. If you go in the cinema, you're distracted for a couple of hours, maybe three hours, maybe two hours, whatever it's going to be. You're going to be absor- absorbed into this world that the director, the writers and the actors have created together for you to just be absorbed into such a creative beauty. And I asked the film industry in in multiple episodes of this podcast to come back with new and exciting films and to be creative and not just to rely on sequels, prequels and remakes. Now, the majority of the time, that is the case. Sadly, we do see that. But I've got some films that I've written down here because I saw some trailers at the cinema that I'm extremely excited about. And I thought to myself, well, thank goodness the film industry actually has responded to what I'm saying and responded to what I believe the majority of people are looking for. If they're going to spend their money, they don't want to just see uh, a remake or a sequel. Now, this is coming for the guy who just went and saw Mission Impossible Part whatever, 6, 7, 8 or 9, whatever it is now, Dead Reckoning is. But the point 
for me was not the the sequel or the quality of the film it was to support tom cruise who has held the film industry together by his bare hands so uh, let's get out of my sets and reps for today and go into the creator it looks extremely interesting utilization of ai within a film and this idea again of ai going to war with humanity very terminator-esque uh, but it is a new concept and a new idea with the fantastic washington uh leading the way and it's not it's his son i've got i've forgot his, his first name uh not it's denzel's son but i've forgotten his first name but none, nonetheless he's a fantastic actor as well that we've seen obviously in christopher nolan films tenant yes Hulk tonic uh diet guy what you never drink on the job you're well informed uh, pays to be in our profession. Well, I prefer soda water. No, you don't. Uh, as the main character, and so it'll be fantastic to see what he does in The Creator. Again, brand new film, Appreciation. Now, this is a sequel, I know, Hypocrisy, thy name is Chris. Uh, but June number one was fantastic, and I thought, I think part two is going to be just as good. Dumb Money, uh, talking about something that we all lived through, and I was making the podcast about at the time, was the absolute craze of meme stocks. And I'm so glad that I didn't buy into crypto or meme stocks the entire time of that. I, I love uh, investing, but the level of dumb money, as it's called, this film, it's called Dumb Money. I think it's perfect. Mwah, so magnifique. <laughs> Just well played because that's what it is. People just not being financially smart and just going with what it, you know lambs to the slaughter almost. So it's really going to be fun to watch this. It does remind me a little bit of The Big Short, which I'm a huge fan of. It reminds me a little bit of that sort of Moneyball vibe as well. So hopefully we can see some of that if it is a good as as good a production. Don't know if the actors are as big or as well just whether they can bring their a game that's what i'm trying to get across whether they can actually make us really want to watch the film it's going to be i don't think it's going to be a big blockbuster film but it'll be interesting to see and then we've got the the final the piece de resistance In this case, and of course, me using French here, it is Napoleon. Napoleon by Ridley Scott and Joaquin Phoenix, which is going to be so good. Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon, talking about how Napoleon took over the entirety of Europe. And I am so excited for this historic piece. Brand new film, brand new concept, utilising one of the biggest bad guys in Europe to ever uh, ever gone through Europe. And it looks incredible and i can't wait because ridley scott is brilliant at making historic films he's so good kingdom of heaven gladiator just an amazing person for putting together these historic films and so in me for me personally i'm super excited for it i can't wait to see what he does with the world building how he can go to egypt how he can go to russia in the winter how he can see how napoleon puts together the army how he shows france in this uh, destructive rebellion period and how Napoleon becomes the emperor. Again, all of these films, back to back to back to back, we're getting this amazing setup of creativity, new thought, new idea, exactly what I want to see. Now, sadly, at the same time, we've got the writers and actors strike that's going on at the moment. And that sucks. But at the same time, it does make me think a little bit in the sense that for the past 20 years, the films and the TV shows that have come out of both the streaming services and the film industry haven't been up to par. So I don't know why they're striking exactly, because they haven't been creating great products in the first place. So if you want to be earning the big bucks, 
Um, this is coming from Bert's person who doesn't have any play in the film industry, so it is purely a critique, and they don't make uh, statues for critics, they make them for the people who do it. So the writers are fully, you know, can tell me to F off any time. I know, it's just an opinion. Go fuck yourself. But it does feel that if you put out good products, this wouldn't be the problem in the first place, and the film industry wouldn't be going to shit in a handbasket at the moment. Now, thankfully, we're reviving it with these great films that are gonna come out, and the trailers look amazing, and hopefully they can back it up with high-quality film, like they have with Oppenheimer and Barbie. And if they can keep doing this, creating and relying on high-quality directors and actors and writers, obviously, together to be able to push forward, I'll be super excited. And I love how, with Barbie and Oppenheimer, the both film industry marketing teams went forward and they ran with the meme, they ran with the internet. They saw what the internet was going for and they thought, instead of you know doing their own thing and advertising it in the way they wanted to do it, they saw the memes, they saw it, and they were like, yes, we're gonna put pink everywhere, we're gonna get people to dress up, we're gonna be all for it, and then Oppenheimer we're like we're gonna blow everything up it's great like let's blow up the, the water brothers suit studio and then have flames coming off the backyard and we're gonna post it and say advertisement for oppenheimer like this is what i'm talking about this is the excitement this just brilliance behind uh, the film industry coming back and we need to take more risks i know it's a business i understand that uh, and I understand that they're trying to make money, but they will make more money if they put out high quality co content. This is a fantastic example of if you put out two really good movies, you follow what the internet's doing, you follow what people want, and you sh show it in the right way and you market it in the right way, you're going to get your money. And you're going to have people flocking to the cinema in the middle of summer. You're going to be flocking to the cinema at any point in the year if you make these films the way that you are. Now, granted, not everyone's got the budget for both Oppenheimer and Barbie. That's fair enough. But what we need to see from the film industry is this level of not relying on hero films, not relying on remakes, not relying on sequels, and pushing forward great film. Now, this is coming from a guy who's just been watching films since he was like seven years old, and truly appreciates the art and truly appreciates the watching experience and I love it that much and I think that's why I'm so passionate about it but I know for a fact you the listener as well the viewer will appreciate the film industry just as much as myself and going to, to the cinema and enjoying that process so please go out there support the film industry go buy your tickets and you know spend as much money as you can on helping the cin cinema industry ah <sighs> Deep breath on that one. Yes, speaking about so Oppenheimer and Barbie section, for those who are here for the Bar Barbie and Oppenheimer section, that's over now. It's over. It's get out, get out of here. Get out of here. It's out. It's over. The door's open. Get out. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Uh, but, <laughs> but instead, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the characters that I've recently been thinking about uh, in terms of life in general and the applicability to, to life. And those two characters at the moment are from Vinland Saga, Vinland Saga Thorfinn and Guts from Berserk. Now, I've talked about in a previous podcast about my experience with Berserk, but uh, I finished the second season of Vinland Saga recently, and it made me realise that in life, as an 18-year-old, I used to feel that the world was on my shoulders and that it felt like everything was against me. And now, as someone who's nearly turning 28 in August, it is a realization that the world isn't on your shoulders at all. The world isn't against you. And using Vinland Saga's fantastic one-liner, you have no enemies. A sword is a tool meant to kill. Why do you need it? Whose life do you intend to take? No, enemies. Your enemies? Who are they? <laughs> well, bad guys like Halfton. Listen to me, my son. You don't have enemies. 
The truth is that nobody has them. Nobody in this entire world deserves to get hurt. And this is the truth. In life, you can easily go around feeling sorry for yourself and feeling that the world is against you. But the truth is, is that the only person who's going to get things on the right track for you is you. And these animes, yes, they may sound, it may sound silly, it may sound weeby. sound all of these things but the truth is is that there's truth in the pudding there's <laughs> there's proof in the pudding there's truth in the pudding as well and in this case i'm talking about how guts and thorfinn live the monk mentality but also they live in this mentality of solitude and stoicism and this idea that even when the world is getting really bad around them when everyone they love is gone and everything's falling to crap you don't lash out at the world you take it on the chin and you learn from it as a lesson and you don't make everyone your enemy you make everyone your friend and your ally and the truth is is that you can't always have friends with everybody as well not everyone's looking out for you not everyone is looking out for your best interest and this is what these films and animes can animes animations i should say teach me in this idea of tough times make stronger people and so you the listener the viewer can take real solitude in these films and animations that you can learn from them and you can learn from the characters and you can understand that putting yourself through tough times will make you a stronger person and that down the line it may come across as a completely different person one thing that i've realized about myself is that if you were to compare me now to the person i was when i was 20 it's a completely different person and i don't think i'd recognize the person i was at 20 compared to who i am now and how I would respond to that previous person, uh, it's just incomprehensible. Just a, a completely, it's like I killed the previous guy. <laughs> Had to kill the other guy. He was a good guy. You killed someone? Wouldn't have been my first call. And that to me is, it, it's extreme, I know. But I think a lot of people can relate to that in the sense that they've evolved as, as a person and the world hasn't necessarily evolved around them, neither their friends or family. You may see people around you not changing. And it's very difficult in that environment. And I am here to tell you that you are alone. And I don't mean it in the sense of you're alone, there's no one else going through what you're going through. We are all going through that exactly what you're describing what I'm describing. But you can't expect everyone else around you to be going through the same metamorphosis or the evolution of your personality and who you are as a person. Like with Thorfinn, how he evolved from this person whose hatred spewed out into the world, how his anger and how he would take it out on everyone around him because of his father's murder. He would try to f seek vengeance as his solace for achieving peace, but the truth is achieving peace was found when he stopped going to war with everyone else and started going to war with who he was as a person. Now there's these words that Goggins talks about where you have to, the conversation you have with yourself is the most important conversation you have in your life. 
and I've only just realised what that meant. For a very long time, I thought to myself that those words meant nothing. What do you mean, conversation with yourself? I'm not insane. I don't talk to myself, says the guy talking to a camera and a microphone in his apartment on his own. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> insanity um, but the point of that is that Goggins is right the conversation of who you ha what you have with yourself and your understanding of your goals and I'm bringing Guts in from Berserk here is that when Guts realises that he's not going to grow if he just stays in the band of the hawk and he doesn't chase his dream of becoming a better warrior and better person he actually analyses himself because he realises he doesn't have any dreams one of the things I did today that made me truly realise like how important certain things are to me and what what I do to, to get to those points is I wrote down my dreams. I'd wrote down the things I want to achieve before I die. And I know that sounds kind of morbid, but at the age of 27, 28, but to me it was important because I realised I'd never done that in my life. I'd never actually written down what I want to accomplish in terms of what I want out of life and who I want to be and what do I want to accomplish. One of them was something I've always wanted to do, which was uh, climb Kilimanjaro in Africa. And I've talked about it in this previous podcast. And uh, again, I've, I've talked about wanting to run the London Marathon, the Berlin Marathon, uh, the Tokyo Marathon, and the New York Marathon. And those things to me are part of my dream. Now, be careful with who you share your dreams with because not everyone's going to want to help you achieve them. For me personally, those are very two of the many things I want to accomplish. And I'm not going to share, share all of them with you right here, right now, because you, let's be honest, you haven't earned that right yet. <laughs> and some of you may say, I've been here for 136, 37 episodes. God damn it, Chris, you, I've earned the right for you to tell me your dreams. And I was like, oh, you've got to do a little bit more than that. You're going to have to prove yourself to me. And you're going to have to prove that you can, can be consistent as those episodes coming out. They don't know me, son. Get it. 18. They don't know me, son. Get it. 19. They don't know me, son. Yeah. 20. You got they some more. Me, son. 21. Yeah. Get it again. Come on. We want to see it. Good. 22. Who's going to carry the boats and the logs? That's you, buddy. Come on. 23. Come on. 24. One more, David. Who's one more to carry the boats? You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You did it. Yeah. Now, if you can do that, go for it. And I will. Otherwise, that's life. And that's another thing. Some people come and go, some stay. And your dreams are your dreams. And that is down to you to be able to figure out. And I'm talking to myself as much as I am to the listener and the viewer. Because to me, the most important thing in life is, as I've said multiple times throughout every single podcast, is to not die with regret towards things I haven't achieved in my life. One of the greatest things that makes me so proud of myself at the age of 27 is the amount of countries I've been to, the um, amount of running I've done, the weightlifting, the keeping myself in physical shape, making sure that I feel good mentally and, and physically and all of the hard work I've put in to my career as well. But it has made me realise as well that how different I am to who I was when I was in my 20s and my goals then. And this is something I have to remind myself and how when people say to me, oh yeah, I'm going to buy a house or I'm going to buy like these long term things that I think to myself, well, in 10 years time, I'm probably going to be a completely different person. So why am I making decisions for pe for somebody in the future? Somebody who I don't know, somebody who I don't know whether is going to enjoy the things that I'm enjoying right now. What if I sign myself up for a 10 year deal? You know, it could be something that in 10 years time I, I resent that deal. You, you, do you see what I mean in the sense that this is why I, I rent apartments as well because I chop and change so quickly in my mind of where I want to be I think we all have this 
um, moments in our lives where we think to ourselves, I'm just going to run off here. In my case, it's just trying to force myself from not buying a ticket to Australia, just going over there, quitting everything and just learning to surf and becoming a surf uh, bum, basically. <laughs> it's just like, it would be so easy to take the easy way out of life and just take the easy road. And I know when things get tough, you always think, ah, oh, if I can just escape this. But the truth is, I've gone down that path. I have traveled abroad and ran away from my responsibilities. But the emotions you feel will stay with you. And who you, f how you feel, it's, it's not as well earned. I promise you this, everything looks pretty on Instagram and all of the other apps, social media applications when it comes down to traveling abroad, but nobody talks about the day-to-day -day life of how we, if you lack consistency and you lack stability, it gets to you. And the, unless you're somebody who thrives in chaos, if you thrive in chaos, you'll love it. But if you're like me and you, you don't thrive in chaos and you thrive on structure, then you will find it extremely difficult to be able to find that when you're in that sort of lifestyle of going from one city to another or traveling the world. It gets your new normal. We see our day-to-day -day mundane lives as something that you would see as a negative, but the truth is if you were to go back before you had your job or before you had your degree, you or, you, or your just, just normal job without a degree, whatever, you would be thinking to yourself, oh, I can't wait to get this job, I can't wait to get this degree, I can't wait to get this job. It, it's this underappreciation, there is always going to be that new normal, we are always levelling up, and you have to realise, and this is something I realised the other day, and it makes me smile so much, because it makes me realise, like, it is finding the happiness and the joy within the majority of life, and I thought of something that thought came to my mind recently is this you're going to be you know if you're like me and you work and you're doing a nine to five and you're thinking constantly about the holiday or constantly about the weekend that is the minority so you're always going to be th trying to find happiness in a moment that's not always there but if you think about the my, the majority which is going to be your working days your normal standard life and you can find joy in little things there, and you can create a structure or a, a regime that's going to create that happiness, which I am doing at the moment, it's going to bring so much happiness to you. And I've realized now, I used to say when people ask me, oh, what are you doing this weekend? And I would normally reply with nothing, even though I know for a fact I'm going to be going to the gym. I'm going to be going for an hour long walk on Saturday. I'm going to be going and recording this podcast. I'm going to be editing the podcast on Sunday. I'm going to be running 13 miles on Sunday. And I always used to just write those things off as if they were nothing. But they're so important to me. And they're so integral to who I am as a person that I've realized that those are the things that keep me happy. And those are the things that mean a lot to me. And I need to stop writing them off as if they're not uh, a occupation on the weekend and that, that, that I am doing nothing. It's not at all. It's the things that create happiness for me. And instead, I'm going to work in the things that are lower priority for me. And I will just start saying no to those things from now on. Because that is, I think, becoming a, a more broadened human being. Becoming somebody who understands what's the priority in life, what's meaningful for you. It takes a lot. I know we've gone from talking about animation in terms of Guts and, and Thorfinn, but Thorfinn realises it as well realizes it as well god <laughs> as well he, he realizes that war isn't the, the way forward and when he negotiates with uh, Canuck about not invading the farm and s saving so many lives is that he doesn't do it in aggressive terms he's doing it to say i will just keep on running i will keep on creating peace i will keep on saying there are no enemies Beating a man into submission is no way to start a peace negotiation. Today is the first I've met any of you. We know nothing about one another. I have no quarrels with anyone here, and I'm not who you came to fight. So what reason could we have to hit each other? It's absurd. We're only here because of a dispute between Canute and Kettle. The two of them could settle it with a game of Nevertoffel, and it would mean as much as this war. But they both raised armies instead, and sent them out here to spill each other's blood. We just met, and we've hardly even spoken. 
I don't have one enemy among these men. I have no enemies at all. And he's not the same person he was when he gave Canuck the scar for killing his revenge. And this is what I'm trying to put forward as well. As a man um, who seeks to become a great member of the human race, to be somebody who people can look up to uh, and, and, and to be hey, somebody who I would have looked up to when I was young. Uh, I have to keep on educating myself, understanding that I'm imperfect and that's okay, but I must seek betterness and I must find myself in the grip of life and in in doing so it must be through hard work dedication and understanding that the easy road and the the easy way out isn't what i should be seeking it should be the the tough times and the understanding that anything is disposable at any point and life and f is fleeting and it can be gone like that and everything can be your job can be gone you can be fired you can your your everything your health your back your you know whatever it is in your t from instance my toenail <laughs> like the other day i went running and it came back black and i had to you know it was, it was gone basically and that horrible you know mindset of oh no ah, everything's going to shit and you have to find in those moments stay calm stay stoic and this is why i always love talking to my one of my best friends alex young he just just reminds me i need to keep that mindset it's so easy to lash out at the world uh, and one of those things that i've realized recently if if you're speaking to me in aggressive tones i'm not going to respond aggressively i am not going to respond with emotion because that is not the strength of man, it is the strength of a child. And that is not what I am anymore. And this is the way forward, is to analyze yourself, analyze the world, and maybe by doing so, and like I am now documenting my progress and documenting uh, my mindset and seeing if anyone else out there is going through that same journey, it could be a real, real enlightening for everybody. And something I've I've realised as well. I, I talked about this on the podcast recently as well. I struggling with reading. I am reading again, and I like I said, Kitchen Confidential and Atomic Habits. But I'm also realising that I'm zooming through audiobooks. So for me, the audio listening is just bam. I've I've done four, nearly three books. No, I've done yeah. I'm on my I'm on my fourth audiobook in under a month. So this is how I'm going to absorb knowledge listening because I can always listen more than I can read. So this, to me, is my way to be able to consume uh, books even faster. And I've got my audio, Audible, uh, blah, 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 Audible <laughs> subscription, so I pay seven ninety nine a month to be able to uh, purchase one of their tokens to be able to get a new uh, audiobook every month. And I'm really excited to make sure that I uh, I do that. And this, at the moment, the, the fourth book I'm on is Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. The other three books was Endured by Cameron Haynes, Never Finished by David Goggins, and Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And so I'm going to listen to something completely uh, new, but also I, I want to choose things that I'm truly interested in. So I'm not going to be experimented too much with the types of books I read, because I realise I just don't finish them. And that's something that I don't want to waste uh, a <laughs> audio subscription token on. So, getting to the end of the podcast here, I hope you've learned something from this and that you understand that the world's not against you. We're here for you, the listener and the viewer. Don't worry, we're going to get together one day. It'll be, it'll be a realisation of all of us being on the same journey of discovering ourselves, but also analysing and understanding that it's very easy to be hard on yourself in this life and compare yourself to other people. But the truth is, the only happiness that you're ever going to find is from you, and that is it. No one else, not in a relationship, not in friendship, not in family. You must find the happiness, what you makes you truly happy. And then after that, then you can spread that joy to all your friends and family and relationships and hopefully bring someone in to your life and make it a plus and make it joyful and not drag them into the dregs of your life. <laughs>
<laughs> so this has been a Tell Us Tales podcast. This has been Chris's Corner. I've been your host, Chris Taylor. And as always, I hope to see you this time next week. Bye now. Look, fuckstick, I'm incredibly busy, so why don't you get the hell out of here before I snap your dick off and jam it into your ass. <laughs>